right, thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. And right now we're gonna be talking about native Texas ecoregions close to Austin in celebration of Native Plant Week. And I'm joined by Kathy Trisna from the Native Plant Society of Texas. Welcome to Central Texas Gardener. Well, thank you. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Let's start off by real briefly talking about Native Plant Week. I know there's gonna be a symposium and some other things taking place here in Austin. Tell right. us a little bit um, about it. Native Plant Week was established, I think, uh, a few years ago. And part of the reason that it was established in October is because actually October is one of the best times to start planting your garden. It's a great time for gardening. It's a cool weather, mm -hmm. it's easier on the gardener and on the plants. That's exactly right. <laughs> and to kind of kick off the Native Plant Week, uh, the Native Plant Society of Texas is having their annual symposium and this year it's in Austin. That's great. And that's going to be from the 15th through the 18th. Okay. Uh, the public is invited. You can find out about it at uh, nipsot.org. That's Native Plant Society of Texas.org. Okay. And we especially uh, would be interested in having teachers and students come. All right. Well, I'm sure you'll get a nice turnout for the event. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're here to talk about all the different ecosystems that really that converge on Austin. That's right. And their distinguishing characteristics. Most people, when they think of Austin, they think of the hill country. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the Edwards Plateau is just one of four ecoregions that kind of uh, all converge on our, the capital area here. Mm -hmm, that's right. uh, and I have always been drawn to the idea of, of prairie gardening, and the Blackland Prairie is one of these ecosystems. What are the distinguishing characteristics of the Blackland Prairie? Well, what's interesting is about the Blackland Prairie is, you know, from its name, it's black land. Mm -hmm. It's deep, rich, organic mm -hmm. soils and a lot of clay content. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is it, it extends as far north as Dallas, as far south as San Antonio, wraps around the Edwards Plateau. And what's interesting is like I-35 runs the whole length of it. Because mm -hmm. if you're building an interstate highway, would you rather be on the prairie or would you rather be in the rocky area? Right. It's a lot easier there. And because of this, you have deeper soils, so some different things will grow here than say up on the escarpment. Sure, sure. Well, you have deeper trees, for example, like a bur oak. Well, bur, exactly. Some plants, for instance, like the purple coneflower, mm -hmm. usually really wants deeper, a place to really put down its roots. Some of the grasses also, you really want to be able to put down your roots. And of course, since it's a little bit east of Edwards Plateau, it gets a little bit more rain. And you know, as we go farther east in Texas, we get more rain, west it's less rain. Right. Farther north it's cooler, south it's warmer. Sure. So that also affects things. Yeah, well, you know, the, the, a lot of people have been working on prairie restorations in the Blackland Prairie. This is an area that uh, it's hard to find in natural uh, surviving ecosystems in, but a lot of people are working hard to restore them, which I think is a very mm -hmm. cool project. You know, the Blackland Prairie, because of its nature, has been farmed, has been right. plowed up because that's really good land. Right. So there really isn't very much native prairie left. Right. So it's been up to those pioneers who are reinvesting in the prairie and that's recreating right. it in a lot of ways. Well, adjacent to the Blackland Prairie and just to the east of it and kind of bordering mm -hmm. it is the Post Oak Savanna. That's and, right. Um, and that's, I, I happen to really like this, the look of the land here, the I think the post oak is a great tree. And it's very it's very interesting. You have this black land, and then you have post oak, mm -hmm. and then actually you have another sliver of black land and another sliver of the post oak right. savanna. You, when you drive to east to west, you go th through all, all of them. Oh, right, right. And the other thing is the soil is very different. It's mm -hmm. deep, it's sandy, so it, is, it can hold a prairie. Can, mm -hmm. The grasses, oh, at least in the past, could grow there very well, but it's much more acidic. Okay. And as a matter of fact, when you get to Bastrop, it's very sandy and quite acidic, and it's the perfect place for the loblolly pines to grow. Mm -hmm. They could not grow anywhere else around, especially not to the west at right, all. Right. Only in that little perfect spot at Bastrop. Occasionally, can they grow there. you'll see one that's been planted here in Austin, only to look pretty chlorotic and sick after that's, a period of time. That's right. And that's what happens when you plant something that's very specific to an environment in an environment that really isn't, isn't for it. Right, well this leads to kind of a truism. Just because a plant is native to Texas does not mean it's native to your part of Texas. That's exactly right. And you know, we're talking about trees like pecans 
pretty much pecans will grow everywhere, but mm -hmm. like the post oak, no, it wants deep soil of a certain type. Mm -hmm. um, Loblolly pine obviously wants a certain kind of soil. Bur oak wants a certain kind of soil. They don't grow everywhere. No, no. So, and again, there are different plant choices for the different areas. Underneath of all those post oaks, great place for something like American Beauty Bear, for example. Yes, well, it's interesting. American Beauty Berry is can also one of those plants that can grow in a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in, in some of these areas, you'll have elderberry. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't get that outside of that area. Um, I think also some of the possum haws, hollies, the deciduous holly, mm -hmm. does pretty well there. I've been struggling on my land in, in the Edwards Plateau mm -hmm. to grow something like that, and it's not real happy. Oh, okay, well, there's, there's a, a grass that grows out in the, in the post oak land called the hooded windmill grass, and I don't think oh. I've ever heard of this before until today. It's a wonderful grass, and, and, and like it says, a windmill, it has a, a long, narrow stalk, and on the very top of it, all the little grass flowers mm -hmm. are kind of in one area, and they almost look like it oh. could be a windmill. Okay, I know. I've it's very seen, distinctive. I've seen this grass. Yeah. I know I've seen it. Okay. It's wonderful. All right. Well, of course, you, we've mentioned the uh, Edwards Plateau, which is, again, hill country, mm -hmm. and uh, again, completely different from the others uh, in terms of the, the soils. Well, what soil it has, <laughs> that's part of the problem, right. especially in the canyon <clears throat> lands of the, um, that are on the eastern edge of the plateau mm -hmm. because they've been dissected by you know, rain and weathering, and mm -hmm. there's very little soil left there. When you get a little bit farther towards Fredericksburg, perhaps you'll have some more soil. Mm -hmm. But the other interesting thing on in the Edwards Plateau is it has been above water for much longer than the parts east to it, and so it's had a lot more time to develop uh, an endemic population of plants. You get many plants that grow here that grow nowhere else. Mm -hmm. Anacacha orchid tree, for instance. Yeah, lots of special niche kinds of plants. Wonderful, very niche kinds of plants. Mm -hmm. And those are not going to do well. Many of them will not do well if you want to go east and plant them in the Blackland Prairie, for, for sure. instance. No, they're not going to deal with that heavy soil at all. No, um, for instance, uh, uh, Melampodia, the Blackfoot Daisy, mm -hmm. the little pretty white little does not want to have water on it. <laughs> no. If you have a sprinkler on it, it's not happy and it'll die. Right. It wants complete drainage. It would not be happy in blackland soil. No. Well, that's an important fact to know and uh, 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 the perfect indicator plant, I think. If it dies on you, you got clay. <laughs> that's right, that's right. right. Well, there's still one other ecosystem I want to talk about, and that's the cross timbers. And, and, and again, it's neat how these it kind of, there's these striations of different mm -hmm. soil types as you move east to uh, west across the state. Right. And this is one of those kind of long bands. And, right. there, and there are two different sections of the cross timbers mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, the cross timbers was a great impediment to settlers coming uh, coming uh, to the west, mm -hmm. it was this huge impenetrable band of forest. Mm -hmm. Once they got through it, suddenly they were in a prairie, which is Grand Prairie. Right. You know, the town of Grand Prairie mm -hmm. is typical of that. And then you had this fairly good soil. Again, it's more of a, an alkaline, lighter soil, mm -hmm. loamy, which is good, but it was, you know, not a lot of uh, organic matter in it. Mm -hmm. And um, what's interesting, both the trees here and the trees in the post oak, a lot of those are more the most western extension of our great southern hardwood forest. Yes. So mm -hmm. you get some of those trees coming in there and you're not going to find them on the Edwards Plateau. No, not at all. <laughs> so they kind of, these, these two bands, one band is immediately adjacent to the Blackland mm -hmm. Prairie and then the then we have our Grand Prairie, and then we have another thin brand, right. band, and then starts the rolling the rolling plains. Well, it's uh, to me it's fascinating, and it, and it's fun when you can get out there and see the difference in the plant types firsthand, mm -hmm. and that's going to be the focus of the conference. It's right. uh, going to be happening during Native Plant Week, and the conference is. Uh, capitalized natives, right? Capitalize on natives. <laughs> we are in the capital. Yeah. Right. And uh, so we wanted to, to look at that. And of course, we support natives, growing right. natives. Um, 
All right. Well, that's the third week in October, and we hope people will participate in the conference. And we mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming on and sharing a little taste of all the different Texases mm -hmm. out there yes. in our backyard. All right. My pleasure. All right. And coming up next is our friend Daphne.